Thank you. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be uh, here and talk about uh, uh, one aspect, one key aspect of gender inequality, and that's earnings. So uh, the Yes, yeah, so inequality uh, uh, in earnings, as I said, uh, between men and women is a, is a key aspect of the uh, gender gap, and there is an enormous literature uh, studying uh, the earning gap across uh, time and countries. And the most widely used uh, statistic is that you uh, uh, look, that you see discussed widely in the press, is the ratio of female to male uh, median wages among workers. That is, you look at the set of all workers, look at how much is earned in the middle, the median of the distribution for men and the median uh, for women, and take uh, that uh, ratio. And that ratio is typically estimated using survey data, the current population survey in the United States. So in the US, to give you some uh, perspective, that ratio was 62% in uh, uh, the early 70s, 76% in 93 and 81% in 2015. So you see indeed a significant drop uh, in uh, the extent of uh, the uh, gender gap over time. So what, I, uh, what we are doing uh, in this uh, study is to look at a more comprehensive measure of uh, the earnings gap, because the traditional median wage ratio captures only a fraction uh, of the total gap in earnings. As we saw from uh, Melissa presentation, uh, Melissa's presentation, women are less likely to work uh, than men, and that was particularly true you know, decades uh, ago. And when they work, uh, they often work fewer uh, hours. The second thing is that the wage as measured uh, in the survey is only uh, capturing a fraction of total labor income. It doesn't include fringe benefits, and importantly, it doesn't typically look at self-employment, that is, if you're a business uh, owner, a self-employed uh, person, and those occupations are very important, actually, at the top of the labor income uh, distribution that's not captured uh, by the median uh, wage. So what I'm going to show you uh, today are some statistics on a more comprehensive measure of the gender gap. That's part of a broader study that we've done with Thomas Piketty and uh, uh, my colleague at Berkeley, Gabriel Zuckman, uh, where we uh, look at comprehensive measures of uh, earnings. And we do that uh, by combining you know, income tax data, and in particular, you know, those W-2 forms and the forms for self-employment income, where you see separately how much uh, each spouse uh, is uh, making, with survey data to capture the very bottom of the distribution when uh, uh, people don't file tax returns, and national accounts to make sure we line up our measures of labor income and self-employment income with what's uh, really in uh, the aggregate doing imputations for some of those measures, you know, like fringe benefits, uh, et cetera. And so the earnings that we end up looking at are wage earnings plus the payroll taxes paid, uh, paid on those earnings, fringe benefits, and full self-employment income. They are a comprehensive measure of labor income that lines up uh, with uh, national uh, accounts. So let me uh, start showing you a very simple measure of a comprehensive uh, gender gap, which is simply uh, taking the average pre-tax labor income of old men aged 20 to 64, that is a, a broad working age population, including zeros. So if you're in jail, you don't work, you are a zero uh, in that statistic to uh, the same uh, average for women, and in, again, including non-workers. That is, if a woman doesn't work, she gets a zero. And so then you get a, a ratio. And so what you can see is that that ratio was huge uh, back in the 1960s, above 3.5. That is, men, on average, were making you know 3.5 more in earnings uh, than women. Then it's declined steadily. Uh, starting in actually the mid-60s uh, into uh, the 70s uh, and 80s, so that by 1990, you are, you are at a ratio of two. That is, on average, men make twice as much as uh, women. And since 1990, the decline 
has been much, has been much uh, slower. So that today, you know, for the most recent uh, data, uh, we have something, a measure that is something like 175%, uh, so 1.75. Uh, uh, so this is a much broader measure uh, than the uh, uh, median. And so you can see the difference here. I have plotted uh, what you get when you take just the ratio of the median weekly wage of men uh, to women. So it's a much, uh, that red series is much uh, lower. Back in the early 70s, it was something like 1.6. 1, 1. And today, it is something uh, like uh, 1.2. Uh, so, so I think it is important. Both measures are important, but the black series shows you that it's not just you know, conditional on working. There is a difference in wages. It's, it's interesting to know that number. But you also have to realize uh, that there are many other elements contributing to the gender uh, earnings uh, gap, likelihood of working, how much you work, and also an average captures you know, what's happening uh, all the way to the top of the distribution, while the median can only capture uh, what's happening in the middle. So let me start now that we've seen the uh, overall aggregate measure to decompose and look uh, within uh, the distribution. So let me start with uh, the median. Median. Uh, pre-tax labor income, but again, including the zero. So when I'm looking at the median, I put, I include everybody who earns zero, and that is in that working age uh, category. And so here you have the uh, statistics for working age men at the top, uh, working age women at the bottom, and the middle one is when you combine men and women. So, uh, and those numbers are expressed in uh, real dollars, you know, consistent with national uh, income, and that includes uh, full labor compensation. And so, so there are a number of striking things you know, in this uh, picture. The first one, starting from the top, is that when you look at working age men, and you look at a comprehensive measure of labor income, and you deflate it you know, by uh, 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 the national income deflator, you see basically stagnation of median uh, labor income compensation uh, over the last 50 uh, years. That's really a striking uh, development. And essentially, you know, so we've done more on that uh, in the study. But it shows you that the, the, in the US, basically, the bottom half of the distribution has been shut out from uh, economic growth, at least on a pre-tax uh, basis, and that's particularly true uh, for men. And you can imagine you know, that an economy that, does, well, that grows, but where the growth doesn't uh, go down uh, to half of the population is going to generate uh, discontent and desire for dramatic you know, policy uh, chances, taking your chances you know, with uh, 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 non-standard uh, uh, policy makers. Now, so that's the, the negative side uh, 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 of this picture. Now, the, the, the happy uh, uh, part of this picture is what happens to women. So they start extremely low uh, in the 60s because many of them are not working. So the median is, very, is a very small number. It increases uh, steadily up to uh, 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 2,000. By that time, you see that women are in the uh, uh, low 20s, so they've caught up somewhat uh, 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 with men, and since then, there hasn't been uh, much progress in the sense that uh, over the last 15 years, the median labor income of women uh, hasn't made progress. But it's 15 years; it's not 50 years of uh, stagnation. Okay. So after looking uh, at the bottom, let me uh, finish by looking. Uh, at the top of the distribution. So let's. So the way we are going to do that is very simple. We are going to look at the representation of women in various groups of the labor income distribution. So let's start with everybody. What is the share of women in the employed uh, population? So it was around less than 40% uh, in the 60s. And you see that it's grown steadily over time. And it asymptotes as something like 48% you know, over the last uh, 20 years. So essentially, women have caught up with men. They are almost in parity. You know, 48% is being very close to 50% uh, overall. Now, let's look at 
uh, groups within you know, the labor distribution. And so that's what we do in this graph. So the green series shows you uh, the fraction of women in the top 10% of the labor income distribution when you combine men and women. And you can see that there you get a very different uh, series where essentially up to the 70s there were very few women in the top uh, 10%, something like uh, 5%. It starts increasing steadily uh, starting in the 1980s, 1990s, and since 2000, it's been uh, something like 25, 27%. So if you look at the US today, and you look at top 10% earners in terms of labor income, and you have about slightly more than a quarter of women. Now, if you move further up the labor income distribution, you get fewer and fewer women. So for example, in the top 1%, you have about 15% of women today. And in the top 0.1%, the really high paying jobs, you have something like uh, 10%. So those numbers are very important because uh, a lot of the economic growth in the US, given that almost nothing has gone to the uh, bottom half, a lot has gone actually to those high income uh, groups. So for the overall numbers, it matters a lot whether or not uh, you are in that group. So, so when you look at that picture, you, know, you can uh, say, yes, those numbers uh, are increasing, and that's a good thing. That's a happy development in terms of uh, inequality in the US. So inequality overall in the US has been increasing uh, a lot, but one aspect that has been a positive development is a reduction in the gender gap that you can see, and, and that has gone, has affected even the top of the distribution. At the same time, you can see that the colored uh, series, especially the red one, are still uh, very much below uh, parity, and if you were to extrapolate uh, that series, you know, the red one, the low slope we have since 2000, you understand that to reach 50%, it would take, you know, uh, decades, if not centuries at this uh, uh, pace. So uh, we have indeed, you know, a very long march uh, in front of us to, to achieve uh, parity. So let me uh, conclude. Uh, by uh, reiterating that the comprehensive gender gap in earnings is much larger uh, than the traditional median wage gap, and it's important to have both uh, in mind. Uh, the comprehensive gender gap has shrunk a lot in the US, but the pace of convergence seems to have slowed down since around uh, 2000. Substantial gaps remain, particularly at the top uh, of the distribution. And so uh, more broadly, I, I, I would want to, to finish uh, uh, by making a few, uh, just sharing a few, uh, a a few ideas that I had as I, as, I, as I was looking at those uh, series. I think the, the evolution of the gender gap is actually a fascinating laboratory uh, to understand uh, the determinants of pay inequality. And I, I think that because if you look at those series, it really uh, strikes you that uh, the narrow economic model where pay is equal to marginal product, so typically your skills that you acquire you know, through education are going to determine what you can do uh, on the labor market, is not going to work uh, very well to explain uh, those uh, time series because women in the US have been very well educated uh, actually for a very long uh, time. So it's very clear evidence that uh, other things matter, which will be obvious to uh, sociologists, non-economists, uh, es essentially in social uh, sciences, but it's very important for economists uh, to understand social norms, whether you know, it's acceptable for in society you know, that a woman would be in this uh, work position, work regulations regarding you know, maternity leave, uh, 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 time, uh, etc. policies that uh, Melissa mentioned, like uh, child care, and really are going to affect uh, the relative power uh, that women command. So power is not a concept that economists uh, use, but that I think is actually fundamental to uh, understand uh, pay disparity. And those things are going uh, to have a, a tremendous impact. And so I invite people you know, uh, working in social sciences broadly to really uh, use this to, uh, to make further progress in our understanding. Thank you very much.